staying in the SEC. In my opinion, the game of the weekend in that conference. Alabama on the road in Knoxville against number six, Tennessee. If we look at the Haslam metrics rankings, even though there isn't a number next to Alabama on the score bug, Haslam metrics has this as Alabama number seven in the country, Tennessee number eight in the country, 2 p.m. tip off at Thompson Bowling Arena. Eli, this is an interesting one because, you know, Alabama is one of the I would say Alabama and Auburn are the two darlings of kind of the metrics community here, Uh, even though Alabama is not ranked in the AP poll currently. They are the number one team by adjusted offensive efficiency by Ken Palm. So a really big opportunity for them to potentially show that the metrics are right. And they are one of the better teams in the country, even though the voters don't see it that way at the moment. Yes. Uh, Alabama's offense, which you would expect under Nate Oates, the pace and space offense you want to play up tempo you want to chuck up a lot of threes and that's exactly what the tide do and speaking of strength of schedule Alabama faced a gauntlet in non-conference play and lost a couple of coin flip games or at least one in particular at the aforementioned Creighton Blue Jays easily could have won that game if Grant Nelson decided to hit a couple threes he did not so they lost and they took advantage of uh, Ryan Cockbrenner's injury for sure in the first half he came back to begin the second half but believe the tide covered in that game. And I think the market is starting to trend in Alabama's direction because, as you mentioned, this line should be around a possession. Now, for Tennessee, Dalton Connect is finally healthy, which is huge for them. Mid-major transfer, speaking of those from the get-go on this show, one of the better scorers in college basketball when he is healthy. The first Tennessee volunteer with back-to-back 35-plus point game since Allen Houston, former New York Nick, and also former Tennessee volunteer going back to the late 80s, early 90s. And he suffered that ankle injury in a loss at North Carolina in comeback fashion, mind you. Tennessee almost came back and beat the Tar Heels, another team that is in the top five in college basketball, at least in the AP top 25. But that ankle seems to be healed up. So big for Tennessee at home in this game to have their best player shooting the ball at an efficient clip again. But on the flip side, going back to Alabama, they've won six straight. Tennessee has won nine of their last 10 games. So I think the market is going to be pretty spot on with the point spread just because market efficiency-wise, Alabama and Tennessee are both red hot. Now, if you look at Alabama in conference play, or at least on the six-game winning streak, all those wins, Alabama was able to control the tempo and they have shot lights out in SEC play right around 42%. 1.26 points per possession is Alabama's offensive efficiency on spot-up shots this season. And this do- probably doesn't come as a surprise to you, Stephen. That ranks in the 100th percentile in college basketball per synergy. And the one lineup that could give Tennessee a lot of issues is Sears, Wrightsell, Estrada, Griffin, and Nelson. Because that's your pace and space Five out offense, especially when a do is at the five for Tennessee. Now, both teams rank below league average when it comes to the SEC in turnover percentage. So, whoever creates more turnovers and therefore is able to control the tempo in their favor at an up tempo pace will arguably win the game. But I also think it's going to boil down to whether Alabama can make Tennessee pay and drop coverage with that five out lineup. And I would expect Oates to go to that five man rotation a lot with right cell off the bench at the two and Nelson at the five, just trying to get a little bit of a match advantage offensively. So to Tennessee's credit, this is a much improved offense from what we've seen in previous years. If you go back and look, Tennessee finished outside the top 60 and adjusted offensive efficiency a year ago. Right now, they're sitting at 21st, so it seems clear that that program realized you know, they're, they're not going to make any noise in the tournament if they don't improve their offense, and they've done that. And the defense is still there. This is still one of the better defenses in the country, number two by adjusted defensive efficiency. Now, although the offense is greatly improved from a year ago, I still take issue with the way they're running their offense, and especially when they're playing a matchup like this against – an elite offense in Alabama. It's not just that they're they're making all their shots, Eli. It's that they're being smart about the kind of shots that they're taking. Alabama ranks 12th in the nation in rim and three rate. Tennessee is 210th. 
So I don't like that with Tennessee, especially if if they're if if Alabama is going to run hot here. You know, maybe they drop off a little bit, but I see what you're seeing. If you look at conference play, Tennessee is 12th in the SEC in three point defense. That's that's not a good combination when you're facing Alabama here, even if they even if they regress a little bit in this matchup. So I guess my follow-up question to you is, is this still a paper tiger with Tennessee? Is this the spot where Alabama gets their signature win? Two good questions. (laughs) I think Tennessee is a national title contender. Not I think. I do believe so, especially with Connect Healthy. That's the key. Like I brought up with Arkansas, South Carolina, not that I'm auto favoring the home team in this spot, yeah, it's but place to play for sure. Right. And I think Alabama could have a bit of a drop off from three, but if they do take advantage of a do in drop coverage, that's the key for me because that's the one way, even though Alabama would be at a little bit of a deficiency When it comes to their rebounding with Nelson at the five against a much bigger Tennessee team, whether Adu is starting at center or he will be starting at center, but whether he's on the court at the five or not. So going to boil down to your typical Alabama game script in a positive or negative sense, whether the threes are dropping with that five out lineup or whether they're not. And on paper, Three should be good to go, but we've seen it happen plenty where a team gets negative variance in a road spot. And I'm not saying Tennessee is going to blow them out, but maybe you look Tennessee live if Alabama's either threes are falling early and you expect regression may not happen or they're not falling from the get go and you expect that to continue. Sure, and, and we'd be remiss without saying that Alabama still appears to be a bit of a liability on defense in this game, sitting 65th in the country in adjusted defensive efficiency. Uh, in terms of projected spreads, Ken Palm makes Tennessee a minus four. Haslam just slightly under minus four here for Tennessee at home uh, in Knoxville. 